last three years, we have been creating resources to support single adults of our faith. Jeff and I are gradually becoming known as the Love and Later Years people. The acronym for Love and Later Years is L-I-L-Y, Lily. So we've titled our podcast Lily Pod, our YouTube channel Lily Tube, and our weekly newsletter, The Lily Letter. And we love the symbolism of Lily. And I'll get into that later, but first, love in later years, what does that mean? Well, for any of you who have followed us on social media, you may be aware that the word later in our organization means that anyone beyond the possibility of a first marriage in their 20s is who we serve. It's that simple. In other words, if you're divorced, widowed, over 30 and not yet married, you are our people. Life and relationships tend to get more complex after that. Unlike YSA, MSA, and older SA wards, no one ages out of what we offer. All are welcome. Our weekly podcast videos and written articles explore and support you in navigating the complexities of single life and developing new relationships. Now, some may wonder, why are we suggesting that a bunch of single people, many who have been rejected and hurt by relationships in the past, focus on love? Many assume we are only talking about romantic relationships, and that doesn't cover it. While we definitely encourage romance when singles become ready for that step, creating love and later years goes much deeper. Now, to go deeper, let's dive into the word love. What do we mean by love? That is a complex word, isn't it? I think it's, we've been spending centuries trying to define it. I would like to refer to 1 John chapter 4 as I attempt to explain what we mean by the word love that we encourage the development of in later years. Verse 7 and 8 read, Let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. This means that having love in us and for others and knowing our Heavenly Father, they go, in, they go hand in hand. They go together. Now verse 9, the love of God was manifest toward us because God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. This is profound truth. Our Heavenly Father wants us to live through his Son. Christ came to do God's will, both motivated by their love for all of us. Not only do we conquer death because of the resurrection, but we also can live to our absolute fullest potential as we accept the gift of Christ's atonement in our behalf and choose to turn our fears and apprehensions into faith and victory in Christ. Now, these scriptures establish that God is love. And Genesis 1.27 establishes that God created us in his image. Now as God's children created in his image and God is love, it stands to reason that we are also love. It's who we are. <coughs> Did you know that you have love in your spiritual DNA? When we abide in love, we are more of who we really are. Love is inside of each of us, ever waiting and ready to be tapped into. When I discovered this truth as a single mom after a 14-year marriage and subsequent divorce, it was freeing to understand that love was an energy I could have access and have with me. My marital status did not dictate that for me. I didn't have to wait around for love to come into my life from someone else. I could access love in me, and from God, of course, and from the Savior, and then allow any love offered me from others to be a bonus, to be a gift, 
rather than something I needed in order to be whole. <clears throat> now the truth about romantic relationships is that some people feel loved no matter who they're with. They just know how to feel love. They know how to feel it. And there are others who will not feel love even if they're with a very loving person. This is because the feeling of love comes from inside of us. <clears throat> it comes from our thoughts, from our beliefs. It is subject to how we see people and how we view the world. It is wise to work on learning how to feel love right now while you're single. That's why we coach. If you want more love in your life, it starts in your mind and in your heart, not in your relationship status. Now, as single life and relationship coaches, we work with singles in the early stages of recovery from serious relationship losses, all the way to premarital coaching for those who are in the final stages of pairing up with their person and everyone, everything in between. <clears throat> now, besides all the work we do with love in later years, I have a confession to make. For the past 20 years, I've been sneaking into weddings all along the Wasatch Front in Utah, where we live, and crashing them. I show up to ceremonies of perfect strangers, blood dressed in black like I'm at a funeral, and sometimes I sit closer to the bride and groom than any other family. Now, I've gotten away with this hundreds of times over the past 20 years. In fact, I've gotten paid to do it. How many you ask? I'm a violinist and string quartet. <laughs> now, two weeks ago, I professionally crashed a Jewish wedding. And right after they were pronounced husband and wife before we played the processional for them, they were asked to do a final task of stomping on a wine glass. And this is traditional, I've seen it before. Well, what stood out to me and the instant I heard it, I had to write it down and include it in my talk. <clears throat> the rabbi said, even the most beautiful, blissful joy can come with sorrow and tribulation. Our people have been known to experience both. The breaking of this wine glass symbolizes those, symbolizes those trials that will come and remind you that love is worth fighting for. Hey, friends, I would like to testify that love is worth fighting for, even if it doesn't work the second, the first, second, or third go round. It's always worth fighting for, even when we're single, <coughs> if we're feeling lonely, and when we're scared to try again. As we choose to find and cultivate love inside of us, we overcome loneliness and fear, and we become victorious in Christ. <clears throat> now that we've explored love um, and how it helps us become more victorious in Christ, I'd like to discuss how being intentional does that, too. <clears throat> Our Amazon bestseller is called the Intentional Courtship, and we do have copies later if you come to the book saying if you want one. But we, um, we're not hardcore salespeople. Please just come talk to us. Like We would love to meet you, get to know your stories, um, and you know, if you do happen to have a book, we're happy happy to sign it. Now, this intentional courtship, um, it's not just a book, it's like a philosophy and a way of life. Um, it leads to intentional living as well as intentional marriage, which allows us to beat the odds of higher divorce rates in second and third and subsequent marriages. Now, <clears throat> when significant relationships end through divorce or breakups or even the death of a companion, it can feel like life is over. But obviously, we know that's not true. In fact, we know that even when we die, life is not over. This eternal perspective means that it's never, ever too late. Ever. <clears throat> we believe it's possible for most singles in this life to get married right, to have success, and to start an eternal relationship here on earth. If that is what you want, and you're willing to do what it takes. 
Pur purposefully and intentionally shifting our own thoughts and behaviors leads us to create a completely different kind of life and attract higher quality people. When it comes to intentionality, we don't have to be intentional about every little thing, but the big things are worth intentional effort. Many people skip, skip over the healing process required to recover from divorce and create a joyful life. I know I did. I had a brief second marriage that didn't work because I skipped that step. <laughs> There's a lot of things we learned along the way that we did not do right, and we know better now. Um, there's also things we did right that, that really worked. Um, and we talk about all of that in the, in the book and in our um, coaching and our podcast and whatnot. Now, they, um, people who move straight into dating and creating a new relationship are really trying to replace the one they lost. I know I did that. It didn't, it didn't work. Intentional courtship does not skip those steps. If we're being intentional, those steps are important. Um, on the other hand, though, when we have to strike a balance, um, by the way, the classes this morning were wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful, and um, Dr. John Brelsford talked about balance, and um, that's something that we realize that when we talk a lot on our podcasts and our videos that, like, we need to make sure we're healing and that we're at least finding some sense of stability as single people before we date, we don't want you to stay stuck there, and you definitely don't have to be 100% healed. In fact, some of the healing comes through the relationships we develop. Um, so once we've got that basic sense of stability and we've done some, some intentional healing, then you know when we're, we've are we got that stability, we can move into healthy relationship development, and that's part of our healing process too. Now, Messiah 428, 27, sorry. Messiah 427 states, <laughs> And see that these things are done in wisdom and order, for it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And again, it is expedient that he should be diligent and thereby win the prize. And I think that's a great um, verse establishing that balance between doing things in wisdom and order and making sure that we heal enough first, but that we are also expedient and diligent and not just in the process of healing for years or decades. It's not something that has to take that long if we're intentional about it. Now, um, now that we've talked a lot about love and touched on intention a bit, I'd like to just talk a little bit about trust and hope. Now, here's where we're we'll, we'll be bringing back in the symbolism of our acronym for love in later years, <coughs> Lily. God closed the lilies of the field. He knows what we stand in need of, and he wants to provide it. Sometimes we need to get out of his way and let him do his work. At other times, he needs us to partner with him and get specific about our righteous desires so he can support our efforts. The famous lilies of the field scripture happens during Christ's Sermon on the Mount, shortly after the Lord's Prayer, which emphasizes letting God feed us daily and let it lead us step by step. And right before the chapter ends, with taking no thought for tomorrow, which means choosing not to be unduly concerned with anxiety over the future, letting the future, letting tomorrow take care of itself. Trusting that God has our backs. Now, in St. Matthew 6, 28, 33, just a little summary. Um, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. If God so clothed the grass of the field, shall he not much more clothe you? Our Heavenly Father knows what we stand in need of. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. To us, lily represents the glorious blessings of our loving Father who knows what we need and has the power to provide it. Trusting God and believing that good things will come in due time allows us to be joyful and hopeful now. And now, now that we've talked a bit about the symbolism of meaning and Lily, I want you to encourage you each to become Lily warriors, if you're willing. Um, and of course, part of that's just going to be spreading love and light. And 
we have a lot of light and love to spread and share. We thought, oh gosh, like 130 podcasts and we put out a new one every week. We've got 250 videos and we put out a new one every week. Um, if you guys would take out your phones real quick and if you're on Instagram or Facebook, Facebook's kind of our hub, that's where we've got the most following, but we've also got Instagram feed and it's all at Love in Later Years. If you would just, um, if you would like to join us, um, that's where we are. Just look up Love in Later Years. We have a page and a group on Facebook and then we have um, an Instagram page. We also have um, Love in Later Years. Um, well, actually, let's just stick with that. Let's keep it basic. <laughs> um, and then, um, while I finish my talk, if you want to also look up just our website, is lovingleaderyears.com. And that's where you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our podcast on whatever app you like. I have all the links <coughs> there. And, um, and then also where you can sign up for our Lily Letter. Um, and we just email you a once a week inspirational letter that has a, a link to our new podcast and video that goes along with the letter. So, um, and so we would like, obviously, for you to come and partake of that love and light that we are trying to spread and something that we're very passionate about. Um, but we're not in the single scene. You guys have the secret access to all these single groups that we don't. Like, they're like, you're married, you're not allowed. And that's fine. We don't want to invade your space. <laughs> but we are happy to be here with you this weekend. Um, but you have that special access to social media groups. We're not privy to as married folks. And if you would each be willing to share our material, once, once you have like enjoyed it and love it, like whatever you like, share it with your single friends and in those groups. Um, and invite maybe a dozen or so of your friends to join our Love and Ladies Facebook group. If each of you did that, we'd get hundreds more people benefiting from the resources that we share. For so much of it's free. And because we love you. Um, now, <laughs> thank you in advance for becoming Lily Warriors and helping more people come and partake of the resources we wish that existed for us when we were single parents. Um, and we, of course, invite you to do that as well. Now, um, to wrap up, in the three short years we've been doing this, so far we've had a Lilypod listener um, come back to church. She hadn't gone for 10 years, and now she knows what we recommend. Um, we've had several people get inspired to study intentional worship in preparation for dating more intently. And we've also had several coaching clients get married and sealed in the temple, and they are busy creating beautiful families. Um, they're blended families, and um, it's exciting to see it. And we would love for this to continue. Uh, again, thank you so much for your support, and we hope some of you one day in the future will send us notice that something wonderful has happened in your life from living with more love and intention and hope. Now, going back up, back to uh, to love, I wanted to uh, end this with Christ and his um, declaration of the two most important commandments, which are, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, to love God and to love all of his children. That includes everyone, including ourselves. And um, I remember, we are love. We have access to plenty of it inside of us. And if you will really take that to heart, I believe you will find it. And it will, it will change your life for the better. Now, Romans 12.10 states, Be kindly affectionate one to another, in honor, preferring one another. You know, this is where dating and friendships among singles become a ministry of sorts. As we get curious about another person's life experience and we prefer to spend time with them, we're edified by that sharing and receiving of who they are and who we are. If you leave this conference with nothing else from me, I want you to remember one thing. You are love. God's love is inside of you. You have access to it, you can feel it, you can share it with others, and you can live in that loving energy. <clears throat> we achieve happiness and joy by abiding in God's love. 
through God's love for us, our Savior Jesus Christ became a real and approachable brother and a powerful source we can turn to for peace and for guidance. We can have victory through him as we cultivate God's love in us, as we create our lives and our relationships with intention in partnership with him, and as we trust with real hope that good things are coming. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.